What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 21 CD podcast, where we ask the hard questions, discuss the dystopian, and develop alternative theories. I'm your host, John. Um, really happy to have all you guys here. We've got a lot of new people on the on the pod, up in the up in the dystopian pod, and I'm happy to have you all here. It's been really fun seeing y'all trickle in and leave comments on my stuff. Um, I've been really uh, liking a lot of your input. And uh, for those of you who haven't checked out my interview on The Confessionals yet, head on over to The Confessionals, uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, and check me out on episode 5 billion, uh, Wendigo Woods. And uh, it's also on YouTube, too, if you want to see my smiling face. On that note, if you are listening to me on a podcast platform, um, there is... I do video production of every episode on the YouTube, so you can head over to the YouTube and check out the video there. Please do that. I spend so much time trying to get my video to look good, so it'd be awesome to have some of you guys here on the on the tube, as well as everywhere else that you listen to your your podcasts. Um. Whether or not you're here for the first time, please consider liking, following, commenting, or leaving five stars because this helps me break into the algorithm um, where I will eventually be able to infiltrate Bill Gates' defenses and save us all from impending doom. And um, nobody likes impending doom, so let's try to get some uh, follows. If you think your friend, your friend would like what I'm saying, share it up, boys and girls. Um... I'm not being greedy, but I am, if you know what I mean. I'm just trying to trying to get this thing kicked off, spread some truth, start talking about some stuff that actually matters as opposed to all this other crap that's all over YouTube, um, telling you how to be and who to be and what to feel like. We don't need that. We need more truth talkers on, on YouTube. You know what I mean? That place is so, so crazy sometimes. The videos that get recommended to me are just so bizarre today i was watching one and i'm not going to drag anybody on the youtube because who knows what's going to happen in the future but they were just telling me how there's no way that i can get any views and there's no way i can get any followers if if my videos aren't high quality and this and that and 10 other things that i have to do just to get my first 100 followers and all that and i'm just like man i'm already way past that and i don't even i'm not i'm a nobody at this point i I'm still doing better than you're saying I'm going to do. Don't believe them. Here on 21 CD, we earn to spread truth. We earn, we yearn to speak truth. Okay, enough of that babbling. We've got a really, really cool episode today. And if you see me looking at my notes and whatnot, instead of looking dead into the lens today, it's because this episode is gargantuan. We have, and not in length per se, but we've got... A lot of topics to get through um, and we've got um, a lot of um, boxes to check as far as connecting all these dots so 
uh, bear with me. I'm going to be looking at you. I'm going to be looking at my laptop. I'm going to be looking at my whiteboard. I'm going to be drinking my coffee. We're all just, just imagine us all just sitting in a room together for this episode and sort of telling a great yarn. Um, a disclaimer, this video, this episode will have a bunch of photos with it going up on the screen. So once again, if you're a podcast listener instead of a YouTube watcher, um, if you do want to head over to the 21 CD podcast YouTube, there are many pictures that will be accompanying this episode. And by the time we get to the end of the episode, I think you're going to want to see some of the things that I'm talking about. So what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about um, the ancient Anasazi and their crazy petroglyphs that seem to be uh, pointing in the direction of portals. Uh, Portals are real, and it seemed like the ancient Anasazi had a pretty good understanding of portals, so we're going to check them out. We're going to then take the, the short walk to the Smithsonian and talk a little bit about what they're covering up and perhaps why in relation to um, portals and uh, timelines that they don't want to um, be known by the general public. And then from there, we're going to visit Mount Shasta, where we see a bizarre connection to the Anasazi, perhaps. And from Mount Shasta, we're going to go all the way to Detroit, modern-day Detroit, where there appears to be some kind of mysterious Stargate um, there. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I found it today or yesterday while I was on Google Maps. I was just looking around um, at this this bizarre structure that I read about in Detroit. And when I zoomed out, I was alarmed to see just the craziest uh, sort of uh, whole area, like a whole park that's uh, sort of built in the same design as the Great Pyramids in Egypt and the Sphinx. And so we're going to talk about that. And then, you know, then we'll I'll let you on your merry way. So here we are six minutes in. Let's get this bad boy rolling. So. This chapter of dystopia really begins around 1 AD in the North American Southwest. This is where the Anasazi originate in the Chaco Valley in New Mexico. Um, You might be asking yourself how this chapter of dystopia could still be playing out since it began so long ago. And honestly, you're going to want to buckle in for the ride because uh, this research and this almost made me lose my mind. So... um, Da, 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 da. Okay, before we before we get right into it, there's a couple Bible verses that I want to discuss before we descend down this dystopian rabbit hole. So Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Really interesting Bible verse. So, things were created out of nothing that we can see. There is an invisible world, in other words. The Bible seems to be talking about it in code occasionally. What is seen was not made out of things that are visible. There's a whole world out there that we can't see. Genesis 28, 12 says, And he dreamed... And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. More portal talk from the word of the Lord, the word of God. More portal talk. So, um, really fascinating stuff there. And it kind of builds on what my idea of of portals is which is basically a bunch of flat layers and you might have heard it referred to as an onion sort of the way that I like to think about it is if you are in a canoe on the surface of the ocean the fish below the surface of the ocean are in their own dimension and you are in a different dimension and um, that's kind of how I think about uh, dimensions so it's it's interesting that in Genesis 28 12 God is talking about um, a ladder set up to, uh, 
on earth and the top of it reached heaven and angels were ascending and descending. That almost feels like it's a very linear sort of um, uh, construct, if you will, um, for how to get to other dimensions. Because I do not personally believe that heaven is a place that you go to. I think that heaven is an opening of the eyes and a forgiveness of the you know for all for all of our sins and everything so like i believe it is more of a transformation that we will go through um and sort of you know because of that we will be able to go to other places and stuff but i don't think you go up to heaven in the sky and uh that's where heaven is i think it is more of a dimensional opening that will be granted to us all right guys so who were the anasazi the Anasazi, or the Ancient Ones, uh, were a potentially cannibalistic lost tribe in the American Southwest in the land that we now call New Mexico. Um, and we say potentially cannibalistic because it's kind of unsure whether they were truly eating each other or just being eaten by something else. But what we do know for sure is that the Anasazi were being eaten. Um, we have found piles and piles of their bones with cut marks and scrapings and um, all sorts of lesions and whatnot that could only be done by bladed weapons um, of the time. And the way that we find that to be true is because how you do that, the process is basically you take human bones or animal bones that are similar to human bones and you reconstruct the process of stripping them of their flesh and what will end up happening is you will compare those markings on the bones from you doing that to the markings on the bones that you find in an archaeological dig and we have found that they line up it's as if these people were butchered and stripped of their meat for consumption in addition to that bones have been broken intentionally and um what I mean by that is like when you break your bone, when you're um, doing something and you have an accident and you break your arm or you break your leg, the break is going to be much different than the breaks that have been found in the Anasazi bones. The breaks in the Anasazi bones are more like a uh, intentional crush in order to harvest the marrow, the bone marrow from inside also for consumption. As if those things aren't enough we have also found skulls, Anasazi skulls, that have been um, essentially taken from the body and then flipped over, uh, the base of the skull broken open so that the, bowl, the skull forms a sort of bowl and then um, burn marks on the top of the skull, which leads us to believe that the skulls were actually used as bowls to boil the brain while it was still inside the head um also for consumption so pretty brutal stuff and before you go running off to uh disclaim this i i will say that a lot of research has been done in this but there's a huge amount of scientists who want to believe that these people were not cannibalistic and um, that is just more whitewashing, uh, attempting to call people savages. But the, the fact of the matter is cannibalism is real, and it has been real forever, and um, it will probably continue to be real. It's probably coming back. I mean, even now, there's... there's um, well, we're not going to get into the fetus eating... Um, and stuff like that but there, there are people who believe that when you eat fetuses for instance it provides you with some kind of sustenance that you need for a healthier longer life and this is real stuff this is not a conspiracy theory um, and that still goes on today so cannibalism is very much still real and uh, you know on that matter I'm going to bring up a book that I wrote it's called 1322 this is what it looks like blah 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 and now you can see it okay the problem is you can buy this from me you have to send me a message the problem is it is written in elder futhark runes um so you can't read it it's more of a novelty thing <laughs> i do have a version written in english but i wrote this in elder futhark runes 
as uh, sort of an experiment and an art project, and it talks about cannibalism and the, um, the consequences of man without God in government as they attempt to discover their true form. Now, the Anasazi were a Pueblo nation. They dwelled in massive great houses with hundreds of rooms. Some of these things, like, we call them great houses because it's hard to really put a name on them. They were, like, fortresses, palaces made out of stone and mud bricks. Um, and eventually, when they moved out of those, they would make these cities up in the the Pueblo rock, like the, what do they call those? The, uh, the canyons and the cliffs. So they would be up off the ground, quite high up off the ground. And we're still not exactly sure why they did that. They had roads and an intricate irrigation system for farming corn enough for a massive population and arranged their great houses according to the stars across a span of hundreds of miles. And, um, so just imagine, I can't remember the exact number, it's something like 80-something of them, of these huge palaces, some of which have like 700 rooms, just spread across New Mexico um, in a star pattern, connected, with, connected by roads. This is kind of what we're talking about. The, the desert all around is is um cut and channeled with these these irrigation this irrigation system uh with ditches that would uh transport water as big big enough for like a small bus to drive through these things like huge and very complex civilization uh due to the huge amount of artifacts that were also found in anasazi ruins it's also assumed that they had quite the handle on trade there there's a massive especially from mexico there's a large amount of artifacts from the other parts of the world that have been found in anasazi territory and in on anasazi ruins um which is just absolutely crazy if you ask me like that you know, irrigation is one thing. Building uh, huge structures and whatnot, that's that's awesome. Um, but when you've got trade, that means people are coming to you and you have something worthy of export. So who knows what exactly was going on, what kind of people were visiting the Anasazi, where those people were coming from, and what influences they brought to the Anasazi people, and also what influence the Anasazi had on them. You know, the Anasazi, you guys might have heard about the Cahokia people. They were around the same time frame. So it's reasonable to assume that the Anasazi was one of the great, the two great kingdoms in North America at this time, next to the Cahokia, who were also building pyramids and had massive trade complexes and were able to, for a prolonged period of time, um, sustain a huge amount of people. Now, it's rumored that the uh, Anasazi were typically under five feet tall, but their physical stature did not define them. Make no mistake, they, they had a hierarchy with nobles and commoners. Uh, this was an official kingdom in North America. And for some reason, that's something that the Smithsonian and the history books of today failed to mention for one reason or another. Um, for some reason... As much as people like to say, like, not giving the Native Americans enough credit is racist and stuff, the history books are doing this on a big level because we have a kingdom here. We have multiple kingdoms in North America with buildings that are just as big as some castles in Europe and were bigger than London at the time and whatnot. And they're just being talked about as if they're just mud dwellers in North America. But these people had it down. Um, and you could say, well, how do you know that they were nobles and commoners? Archaeological digs have shown that uh, the nobles, there were people in this Anasazi kingdom who did not do the same type of work as other people, which leads us to build the hierarchy. We know there were princesses and we know there were kings. Um, 
punishments were cruel in the Anasazi kingdom and ranged from basically being torn to pieces, limb from limb, to having homes burned to the ground, to being consumed by your fellow man. And this process of punishment was uh, often called the ritual of forgetting, which, wow. They're generally remembered as a mystical, barbaric, and borderline evil people, uh, even by their Puebloan descendants that are still alive today, because a, a number of Pueblo tribes that are still in the American Southwest uh, do claim their roots to Anasazi people. Now let's get into some of the fun stuff. They had a wide variety of strange deities, as is evident by their extensive petroglyphs. These guys were artists. They loved their petroglyphs, and that's great because it helps us paint this picture um, of who they were and what they were doing with their time. And it appeared that they were fighting off monsters and going through portals and maybe even becoming monsters themselves. These petroglyphs appear to show horrifying monsters of nightmares plaguing the ancient Anasazi. Bizarre beasts of all shapes and sizes can be seen in these petroglyphs. Sometimes the Anasazi are worshiping them uh, other times the monsters are literally ripping their heads off as like sort of like like head hunters. But the petroglyphs also seem to show something else that is pretty bizarre and pretty common in their petroglyphs like across across a wide uh, space of land we're finding these spiral petroglyphs. And there's this is where I'm going to start putting pictures up on the YouTube. Um it would appear that the spiral petroglyph, which is common not only with the Anasazi, by the way, but is found all over the world, um, was a critical element to telling the story of the monsters, gods, or whatever those things were that were hunting, enslaving, and in other forms of contact with them. Um, I think the spiral is the key to it all, to be honest. When regular men in these petroglyphs are being depicted entering the spiral, they appear to vanish without a trace. Or they'll end up somewhere else. Uh, you'll sort of see some glyphs where it seems like they're half in, half out. Um, but even more curious is the fact that some of the petroglyphs appear to show a man transforming as he enters the spiral uh, and coming out of it on the other side, his body seems to be different than um, it was when he originally went into the spiral. Um, there's depictions of spirals in the hands of monsters and strange creatures like giants um, and alien looking things. Uh, and these depictions are found all over uh, the desert out there. It prompts the question, what could the spiral be if it's not a portal? Uh, and it, when you look at some of these pictures, notice where the spiral is. Notice how many there are, too. It seems like there are beings that are able to carry the power of these portals, whether that is power to open it or they just know where they are. Who knows? But these Anasazi genuinely believed and seemed to be in deep uh, trouble with whatever these things were that were coming through or at least were communicating with them often you know who knows for sure the Anasazi vanished without a trace so this is one of those those ancient people who is who are lost we don't know what happened to them the Anasazi also would construct these circular sort of walled pits that they called kivas where it's rumored they believed they could and would be able to summon these things from other realms a sort of like a landing pad for these interdimensional travelers of the spiral it's unsure if the anasazi truly had any control over these things in my opinion they may have been more at the mercy of these horrifying beings. 
and around 1300, as I just said, the Anasazi simply vanished without a trace. And to this day, nobody really knows what happened to them. Uh, and even the Smithsonian, the liars that they are, call it a mystery. The Smithsonian, when you look it up, will probably tell you that um, there was some sort of mini apocalypse that just scattered them to the wind. We, but we don't know. And a lot of times when a tribe gets lost, when a people gets lost, what really does end up happening is they sort of just fracture into smaller groups and they just spread across the land, whether that's because they are so big of a group that they can no longer sort of produce enough food for the whole or um, another big one is disease when you have a large amount of people living together um, you know all of their waste and whatnot can create a problem if you don't have a, a good way of disposing of it that's another thing that will often cause large groups of people to fracture into smaller ones and spread across the land but we're not here for a history lesson today. We're talking about this spiral. Is it possible that they um, were essentially eaten by these monsters? Like literally pushed to the brink of extinction by these things that were coming through the spiral? Or did a lot of them enter the spiral and turn into other things? What? Why is the spiral such a huge and critical aspect basically in all of their petroglyphs. Now, we know the Smithsonian has been hiding evidence of mysterious creatures, lost tribes, giants, and lowercase g gods, and also historical timelines that don't fit their narrative since they were basically created. Since the Smithsonian was created, they have been on a mission to sort of rewrite history in a way that supports uh, the story that their demon overlords want to be told across the face of the planet. Wherever alternative evidence pops up, the Smithsonian appears to quickly arrive and smuggle all that evidence away, and then they wipe the dig site clean of anything that doesn't follow history as they and the Mystery Babylon cults have written it. This is just the way it is. Who are the Mystery Babylon cults? Well, think of the Knights Templar, uh, the Freemasons, the Order of Assassins. These are all one in the same, Mystery Babylon cults, and there's dozens more. And in essence, they are satanic cults filled with all of the power, the global elite, and since the dawn of time, they have been attempting to rewrite history so that God is not in it. That is a very general overview of these mystery Babylon cults who want to hide and control the portals and the access to other dimensions and also, to an extent, their power. But they will get to a point where they're not hiding it anymore and it will become a very real part of everybody's everyday lives. And the Smithsonian works for them. So of course that's why they would hide these things. Even in the Chaco Valley where the Anasazi people are, there have been prints, uh, footprints and handprints with six digits like giants. And they've been hidden from the public and you can only get to them with special access. Why? We have to start asking our qu uh, these questions. Um, I mean, what would happen if a timeline existed that didn't line up with what the Smithsonian and scientists of our day have been telling us is true? Such is the case with the mysterious traces of ancient Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. Have you guys heard of that stuff? Like, there is a timeline where ancient Egyptians are actually came over before Christopher Columbus and inhabited the Grand Canyon. This is real stuff. Like, we have found the evidence. And we're going to get deeper into that right after this break. Don't go anywhere. You will regret it for the rest of your life 
if you do, we still have to get to how this all pertains to this crazy and mysterious park in Detroit, modern day Detroit. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. Thanks for hanging in there. So what would happen if a timeline existed where ancient Egyptians were known by all to have come to the New World before Christopher Columbus? How would that impact people? You know, like, I keep asking myself, like, what would be the big deal if that got out? What would happen? And I think a large amount of people... This is where I think it gets into spiritual warfare. I think a large amount of people will just be like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, like, oh, okay, who cares? We're all poor and busy and hungry and depressed and need all of our drugs to be happy and to function normally. So, okay, so what? Thousands of years ago, there were, uh, you know, ancient Egyptians in, in the Grand Canyon. Ooh. That's what I think would happen. So why is it a big deal that the Smithsonian continues to hide this? That the Mystery Babylon cults hide this? It's because those of us who know what's going on, those of us who have a pretty dang good idea of what's happening, our faith will be strengthened and we will have even more ammunition and even more confidence, and there will be even less of a window for them to creep into our souls and influence us. That is what I believe, because make no mistake, as I've said before, as I said on the confessionals, there is a very real spiritual war that is going on in the dimensions around us, and they are attempting to bleed it into this dimension as well, and it will happen. The scales will fall off of our eyes, and we will soon be exposed to that war. If we are prepared for that to happen, they're going to have a lot harder time taking our taking us over now whether you believe in the christian faith or not if you're if you're not believing in the christian uh sort of point of view that's also fine because armageddon is across all cultures there is an end to the world okay it's like this is whether you know like even if you're secular completely secular uh atheist you still believe that the planet's going to explode. So, why is it such a secret that they settled in the Grand Canyon? We just talked about that. But they've still they set up uh, private security in these locations in the canyon. They've sealed up caves with concrete and stone and established no-fly orders. They've destroyed and smuggled the evidence away that would tell us the truth of this world. And it's all because there's a great evil at work. An evil that began long, long ago with these mystery Babylon cults and is nearing very close to what they think is a desired result. And that my friends, is how all of this, all of this Anasazi talk is still in the same chapter, in my opinion, um, as it is today. I think we are still, even though it's a different chapter in time, the story is continuing and I believe we can trace it to the Anasazi amongst many other ancient peoples. It's just, this is like this portal stuff, this hiding the evidence by the Smithsonian and the powers that be stuff. That is stuff that makes this inherently dystopian because it is ancient censorship. It is censorship that has been happening for years and years and years, and it's still going on to this day. And the problem is, the problem that makes it feel like it's not censorship is because they do allow some of these topics to come out and then you get little itty bitty morsels of it. It's like if you just eat a little bit of rat poison, you're probably going to be generally okay. But if you eat a lot of the rat poison, you're going to die. It's sort of a reverse of that. So 
kind of like, you know, I discussed with Tony Merkel. They're exposing us to very small parts, slowly, little pieces at a time, so that eventually we will just be like, and regular people, everybody will just be like, oh, yeah, of course, everybody knows there were ancient Egyptians in the Grand Canyon, duh. But they don't realize that that is a huge lie that has been, like, the Smithsonian has been hiding it for years and years and years to the point where now we all of a sudden believe it, even though originally we weren't supposed to, that is massive scale manipulation. That's why it's so dangerous. John, how are you going to connect this to the modern day besides, yes, the Smithsonian is hiding stuff? I'll tell you guys, because we already know that, right? Like, we've known that for a pretty long time. And a lot of podcasts like mine talk about it. But what I don't think a lot of podcasts talk about is the why. Because I don't think they know why. And I don't think I truly know why either. I've just got some pretty good ideas that make sense. And if you think about it from a spiritual perspective, it's pretty easy to to get to the bottom of it, in my opinion. They want to destroy God. They want to eliminate this idea that we can travel through portals, that we can transcend dimensions, that we can um, become holy and experience the power of God, that we can bear witness to things that are more powerful than the forces of evil. One thing that happens in wars is this propaganda system, the PSYOP operation is always in place where you uh, attempt to convince the population, um, the regular people of the enemy or in enemy occupied territories, that the enemy is weak and or has surrendered already, has already given up, that they have no way of winning. That's kind of what the forces of evil are doing today. They are attempting to convince us this is the way. There is no way out. None of you are escaping. So just embrace it and live a happy life. That's what they want. When we've got all these NPCs walking around, and if you guys haven't heard my idea on NPCs, I have some some footage on YouTube and Spotify. And honestly, it's on all platforms now, but you can go back and look at that, and I will be revisiting it in the future now that a lot more of you guys are here and interested in that kind of stuff. But those NPCs are there. Uh, some of those people, a great portion of that group of people, are their army. And the reason I call them army is because they're, they just don't do anything. They get in the way, and they attempt to... Uh, just because there's so many of them, by default sort of convince people who may have faith or wavering faith or whatever the case may be that they're weird, they're different. Join us. Be like a, the whole. Be like the group. Be like the flock where you just got to do this, this, and this, and your life will be happy and good and successful. That's what the point of hiding the timelines is. That's what the point of convincing us portals don't exist and giants don't exist and God doesn't exist. None of that's real. That's all woo-woo crap that was never anything. And everybody since the beginning of time has just been lying. That's such a, such a conceited and uh, blind point of view. Even when you think about it, the, when they try to convince us that giants and portals and lowercase g gods and uppercase g god and all that stuff is not real. So you're telling me that everybody else throughout history has just been lying about it? That they've just been confused? That they've just been a bunch of dirt eaters sitting in the desert drawing pictures on the wall with their fingers and they're just not? They have no idea what they're talking about. Who do you think you are? Like, honestly, like, when I, whenever I hear that idea, it's just like, who 
do you actually think you are and how do you think you know how are you going to say that stuff but then on the same token you're going to say stuff like they had huge kingdoms and they were able to develop an irrigation system in the desert and they had trade routes and they were as big as uh, London at the same time period and they had thousands of people and you know we don't know how they did it but then in, you're also going to say that they were just dirt eaters drawing pictures of aliens because they didn't know what it was um, and they just had to believe in something because that's the nature of humanity no that's stupid it's like it's like you're taking two contradicting ideas and making them work for the same end and it, it just doesn't work if you have any sort of brain in your head that does not work so I'm glad you guys are listening to this because it already me if you're here you're not an NPC but we as you know, people who believe in something more have to understand that the majority of the population are walking around with that state of mind, with those scales on their eyes, their head full of fluoride, not thinking about any of this stuff because they just want to make their money, get their condo, drive, you know, their Benz or whatever. And don't have time for any of this except maybe that 45 minutes to an hour at the end of the day where they'll watch a movie for entertainment purposes. And then they'll go to bed not even thinking about, oh, man, I wonder if there's something else out there. No. And that is the point. That's why they hide the spirals. That's why they hide the six toes and the six fingers. And that's why they hide the ancient Egyptians coming to America. Because this does not allow them to control us. This is hidden knowledge. It's forbidden because it doesn't align with their timeline. We have to be really careful that we don't fall into that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that is just... And we got to keep listening to these podcasts. And we got to keep talking about this stuff. Because we, as regular people, can fall into this too. Where we just end up being, like, totally stuck in our ways. But look, I'm preaching a little bit here. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but let's get back to these spirals. <laughs> sorry. I got away from it a little bit there. But, um... Here we go. In my opinion, I think that these portals play a critical role in their so-called desired result, uh, which is taking over the world for good. I think they actually believe they're going to be able to. And I think the story of these spirals uh, encourages them. When they see these beings coming through these spiral petroglyphs, these massive monstrous creatures all across the world, I think they honestly believe that that is how they too are going to take over the world still. This is a concept as old as time. And even today, with all of our technology and everything, I think they believe that they're going to be able to uh, pull things through other dimensions and uh, take over the world and it's kind of like that situation in movies or in stuff it's not just movies it's very real but you might think of it better in movies but like when people are just like look we're like when the big bad guy comes to the land and he's just like look dude my army is huge i'm super scary i've got a really big sword all you have to do is not get in the way and um, I'll let you live and maybe even make your life really nice. That's what I think these monsters and lowercase g gods and demons are doing to the global elite. Because the global elite think there are these big dudes. They think like, oh yeah, we're strong. We've got all this money. We've got all this power. We've got all these countries in our back pockets. All we have to do is wait for all these spooky things to come through the portal and boom, baby, we're going to be living good. We're going to be living like kings. Boy, are they in for a surprise. So, perhaps the Anasazi were victim to these same creatures 
that are attempting to take over the world today. And they definitely still come and go through portals. And perhaps these global elite are attempting to assist them on their mission to take over the world on an unprecedented scale. And maybe a lot of that is through modern technology like CERN and stuff like that. Projects where they are attempting to open portals. Even in Tennessee, there was a rumor that the uh, colliders here were attempting to open portals. Why would we be attempting to open portals? I asked that question while I am also attempting to open a portal, but I'm not ready to talk about that quite yet. That's pretty hush-hush. That's exclusive. But there's there's a experiment that I'm running, um, that I'm in the process of building to become something that may impact the atmosphere. Um, in a healthy way, by the way. And I'm interested to see what the results are, but I'm keeping it super cryptic because I'm not ready for it to get out yet. Um, and it doesn't really relate to this story. But my point is these things are probably still attempting to come through portals and they need mankind to help them do it. They need us. What they're going to end up doing is creating this... Uh, obviously speculation this dimensional bleed that you guys have heard me talk about that encompasses the whole globe and two dimensions are going to become one and it's just essentially going to be this realm this whole world is going to be filled with monsters and creepy crawlies for anybody to come through for anything to come through that's what kind of the gist of what I believe is going to happen or going to be attempted to happen. Of course, they're not going to succeed. We know that by reading the Bible, that we, the righteous, will prevail. God will prevail. But the forces of evil, of course, they don't have faith that God will prevail. So they are still attempting to make this dimensional bleed a global catastrophic event where they will finally have a chokehold on us, on the planet. And they're using the global elite to do that. Some things appear to be hidden in plain sight. This is where we connect it to the modern day. So a lot of you guys have heard about Man Mount Shasta, and the mysteries that go on there. Mount Shasta is also believed to be some sort of huge, like, sort of location for portals where things come and go. There's a lot of UFO sightings there. Um, what is it? The Lemurians are rumored to go there or come from there. There's um, time shifts and portals and strange creatures that are seen there. Um, frequently it appears much more frequently than other places on the planet why probably because mount shasta is one of those locations like 29 palms and the bermuda triangle and the alaska triangle and all these other places where the quote-unquote veil is thinner as people say in my opinion, it's a location of extensive dimensional bleed to the point where there's pretty much the whole area is pretty much constantly exposed to the bleed. There is no real one portal. It is all portal. It is all a location where dimensions are colliding. That's why people, all sorts of people experience all sorts of weird stuff there. That's be uh, constantly. It's because this is one of those locations that is always open, always pulsating. And what's interesting, get ready for more pictures on the screen, is they use modern people, use the spiral symbol there too. And look at these pictures. These are actual people who are going up on Mount Shasta constructing this giant uh, spiral, the symbol of the portal, and they're doing a ritual called Becoming the Vortex. These people probably have no idea what they're doing. 
And it's just their own little special new age cult thing where they think they're gonna, they're also gonna go home and kiss their crystal goodnight. That's the type of people who are doing this kind of stuff. Also, there's been a bunch of satanic activity found on Mount Shasta, so that contributes as well. I'm sure they have their own vortex that they're attempting to become. But, like, the portal connects in modern day. Modern day people are still trying to enter the vortex, to create the vortex, and to transcend. And I don't think it's coincidence that the place that they're doing this is literally in modern day, uh, like, Mount Shasta, where everything is happening, where a bunch of stuff, UFOs, Bigfoot, uh, portals, dimensional shifts, time loss, all that kind of stuff is happening at Mount Shasta, and of course the spiral also shows up there. There's another crazy place the spiral shows up, and it's in this strange park in Detroit. There's like this bizarre portal structure there. Get ready for more pictures, and I actually put together a whole big image so you guys can kind of see what I'm going to be talking about. Um, there's this structure there known as dun -da -da -dun, transcending. That's what it's called. And it's not the only bizarre feature on this park. But if you look at pictures of transcending, and you will if you look at my YouTube video, you will see it's like this giant circular portal looking thing. Made out of metal. There's four other constructs arranged in the same pattern as the Egyptian pyramids and the Sphinx in this park. And they're just sitting there for anybody who cares to go notice them. I did it on Google Earth. That's how I saw this, and my mind was blown. These strange features are eerily reminiscent of a pyramid, an Anasazi Kiva. Remember, this is where I said this is where the Anasazi believed that they would summon deities and monsters and beings, like a portal, or sorry, like a landing pad for these things to come. There's a star god shrine, which is a fountain, um, but it's arranged in uh, such a fashion that it, it literally looks like some of the, the depictions that we've seen of people holding up a star god above their head. And there's also an obelisk, or an obelisk, depending on how you say it, but, and that would be like the location of the Sphinx in Egypt. And of course we know that the obelisk, the obelisk, is an occult, um, an occult structure that is essentially the symbol of the um, phallus of the old gods. That is literally how that thing originated. This is crazy, and it's just in a park in Detroit in front of, like, the GM headquarters. Like, what? An extremely occult, star-pattern-oriented uh, portal construct, like, just hidden in plain sight in Detroit. One of the largest industry hubs in America, and probably in the world. You add the transcending arch to all of this, and it would appear that there's something extremely sinister afoot in this little area. When viewed from above, however, it gets even more eerie. Even eerier. Because the transcending portal uh, structure is not just an arch. It's not just a big circle. It's built on a spiral shape platform. So when you look at it from above, it is the shape of a spiral. Very much like the portal symbols of the Anasazi and many other civilizations throughout time. Guys, this stuff, it's like they're laughing at us. 
So yeah, are the powers that be just paying homage to ancient cultures or is there something sinister going on? Are they hiding portal and dimensional bleed locations in plain sight? Like, is this something that they're planning on um, switching on? Is this is there something more to this than we know? Because we just walk around it and take pictures and we're just like, oh, look how crazy this thing looks. Not knowing that it's literally an altar or a portal or a stargate or a location of bleed we don't know what it is we just think it's like cool structures bro like we're gonna go take pictures next to the transcending arch everything about it points to the this occult mystery babylon agenda so yeah are these things gonna play a bigger factor in the future for these global elite and these beings that come from other dimensions what are they? Why were they built? What are we going to use them for? What are they going to use them for, I should say? And nobody really knows, uh, but it seems way too intentional for me to just call it a coincidence. <sighs> Nothing like a good cup of joe to accompany your conspiracy theories. Listen, guys, a lot of this is going to sound super weird if you hear it for the first time and you're just like, what the heck is John talking about? This guy is off his meds. Never been on them, guys. Never been on them. I stay off them things. As I say, don't drink the water. Question everything. We're in a freaking scary time right now. And, you know, the guide stones blowing up, that, like, that was another star pattern thing. That was another, like, strange old type sculpture that was made uh, long ago, or recently, sorry, but mimics things that were made long ago. There's another one in Iceland, and you guys know how I love Iceland, so I, I just thought of this. I'll put that up on the pictures, uh, uh. I'll add that to the pictures on YouTube as well because this one in Iceland is crazy too. Like, are we just continuing to build these things? Are the the powers that be and the people and the are they just building these things because they like them because they think they're cool or is there something else going on? Why are we continuing to build these things that, you know, the ancient people believed they were portals and ways to speak to the gods? To their deities. Why are we still building these things today? Because regular people aren't going there to communicate with gods. I said gods. Because it's like. Nobody's going. Whether you're a Christian or anything else. Nobody is going to these things to speak to gods. So. Why are they there? I guess the easiest explanation is that they're just art pieces. Literally. Stop thinking about it. Fine. Maybe I can get it. If you guys believe that, that's fine. Personally, I don't. You know? When I saw this thing in Detroit, I was just like, dude, there's like, it's in the shape of a spiral. The Anasazi have these spirals where th monsters are coming in and out, coming and going. Men are going in and out and changing along the way. The, there's these spirals on Mount Shasta where people are performing rituals to become the vortex, where we see UFOs and aliens and Bigfoot and monsters and Lemurians and all this stuff. There's spirals all over the globe. What's going on? These are all pictures. They're landing pads. We have to put these things together in our hearts, and we have to come to the understanding that there's probably something more than just art uh, to credit for this kind of stuff. Listen, guys, this has been a great episode. Had a lot of fun with you. Follow, subscribe, rate, Give me your love. I got to head out of here. Tell me what you think in the comments. And remember, don't drink the water and question everything. Love you guys.